Howdy mates, top of the morning to you. Today marks August 25th, 2024. And you can definitely tell that the scenery is very much different than what uh, you had seen in my most recent films. I have made a return to a park that I have been to before, but this time it's a bit of a more special occasion. August 25th actually marks the creation of the National Park Service back in 1916 by President Woodrow Wilson. You figure parks were already existent back then, but it wasn't until 1916 that an official, what you call, bureau was put together as part of the Department of Interior. And so today marks the birthday of the National Park Service, and ironically enough, we are in a national park. This is Arches out in Utah, marked by its desert-like climate in which some of the plants are a bit more succulent, a bit more hardy. For instance, we do, as a matter of fact, have some red cedar next to us. I can imagine that this is most likely western red cedar. There's two varieties of them. I believe with western red cedar, the particular cones in this case are a little larger than your eastern. Surprisingly, they're not really berries per se. They actually are a form of a type of cone belonging within the classification of conifers. But specifically, East, well, Western Red Cedar belongs truly in the Juniper family. But Arches National Park was at first dedicated as a monument in 1929, ironically by President Herbert Hoover. That's something that one of his contributions often goes overlooked. But it wouldn't be until 1971 in which Arches would be dedicated as a national park. But, you know, you can have a glimpse of the bedrock that makes up this area. It's predominantly sandstone for the most part. And what we're mostly looking at here with a bit of that gray-ish tone is most likely the Moab member of the Curtis formation, if I'm not mistaken. It's a little more erosion resistant. And then it f is followed by, just behind me, the Slick Rock formation, which has more of that red And then we turn around again and we look further in the distance. Way over there, the rock looks a bit more crumbly. That is your, as long as I have it correct, that is the Dewey Bridge formation. And it is that very rock layer that is weathered a lot easier and eroded as well because it's mostly sand and silt and it's that very rock layer strata layer that is responsible for creating the arches at this very park and it is given that name because it has the highest concentration of them up to approximately 2000 if not more at least of what's known. So, all right, you guys, have a good one. 
have a great rest of your Sunday. And of course, journey on a journey is onwards. Take care, folks. See ya.